Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I pray that you had a wonderful night's rest. I'm waiting for a few more people to come in. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Worthy to be praised, O oh God. Glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Smith. Good morning. We are talking about being stuck no more. Anybody ready to get unstuck this morning? Glory to God. Stuck no more. Stuck no more. There are several scriptures that... Um, I was kind of meditating on on where to come from. Good morning, Sister Jingles. Good morning, Tracy. And where God kind of landed me was on um, the children of Israel. I at first thought I was going to title this, Keep It Moving. But as I studied more and more, good morning, Q. Good morning, Evangelist Karen. I realized the Lord said... Um, to talk to his children about stuck no more. So we gonna go right on in, amen. Daddy God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. Your word is truth. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. God, we thank you. We thank you that you give us another opportunity to seek your face, God, to show our commitment. God, thank you for the watchmen on the wall. Thank you for those in 5 a.m. prayer. Thank you for those who continue in prayer throughout the day, oh God. Seeking your face, God, wanting to do your will, oh God. Your word says your will, your will is that we obey. My God, your will, hallelujah, is that we obey. God, so the very fact, God, that they are up this morning, ready to receive the word, ready for the word to fall upon good ground, they are already in your will. Now, I ask that you bless them and bless them indeed. Enlarge their territory, God. Give them grace. Give them favor. Glory to the King, God. Give them the answer to their prayers, Lord. And so we love you today, Daddy, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. When we look at Scripture, the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 1 that uh, the, the travel, the, the journey through uh, Israel was a... 11 day journey. We all know the scripture. I'm looking for my glasses, y'all. I, I thought I had them in front of me here, but I guess I did not. Uh, but it was an 11 day journey. It was an 11 day journey that took them 40 years, the Bible says. It took them 40 years to do, to travel uh, through airways. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Stay with me and just keep praying about this connection. Amen. We plead the blood over the airways. Hallelujah. The prince of the air don't want you to know how to get unstuck today, but we're going to get unstuck. Hallelujah. So the word says in Deuteronomy chapter one, it says that the children of Israel were taking a one, not one day, a, an 11 day journey that took them 40 years. That's what the Bible says. And they, it says verse two, normally it takes only 11 days. This is the new living translation. Normally, good morning, uh, sister Yvette. Uh, it takes only 11 days to travel from the Mount Sinai to where they were going, which is the way of Mount Seir, but 
40 years later, 40 years later, the Israelites found themselves at their destination. Stuck no more. God wants us to be stuck no more. So as I really started meditating on Deuteronomy 1, I started asking God, God, am I stuck anywhere? And I've told the testimony that my, my stuck or my fear was the fear of success. I struggled with the fear of success because I knew that in order to achieve success, there are some things that I had to do differently. Uh, certainly never taking God out of the equation. Never taking prayer and, and fasting and meditation and study of the word out of, out of the, the, the um, equation. However, I knew that there were some relationships that would have to change. I knew that there were some ways I was going to have to redirect my time. And, and I can be an early bird. I can be an early bird. And I've always... Well, should I say always? I've been like that certainly as an adult. But here in these last few couple of, maybe year or so, my sleep schedule has kind of got off, right? So I have to just be very mindful and very intentional about getting my sleep and my rest because I don't know when my body, good God Almighty, is gonna wake me up. But in this in this journey of accomplishing purpose and moving towards destiny. We can get stuck. Uh huh. We can get stuck and we get stuck for a couple of reasons. One, we stop, we, we, we take God out of the equation. That wasn't my issue. I want you to really examine yourself this morning and ask yourself, if you are stuck, tag somebody, share, invite someone to be a part. You know you got a friend that's been complaining, man, you know, I can't I can't get ahead. I'm paying Peter to pay, I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. Things are just not moving for me. I got all these ideas and all these visions. I just feel stuck. Some of you feel stuck in the church you're in. Some of you feel stuck in the job you're in. Some of you feel stuck in the relationship you're in now. So it's Tuesday ain't never telling you to leave your husband. That ain't God. Leave your wife. That ain't God. Okay? Get you some counseling so you can get unstuck. It's just some practical things, right? I just can't lose this weight. Then stop eating them Snickers. I just can't seem to do this. I can't seem to do that. Then get in the gym. What is it that you need to do to get unstuck? The first thing you need to do is make a decision. Well, confess what it is. What it is that you are stuck in. What place are you stuck in in your life? Some of you are still stuck at 8 or 10 years old when you were molested, when your parents got divorced, when something was done to you. God needs for you to get unstuck this morning. Do not let something that should have only taken you 11 days to take you 40 years to be delivered from, to be set free from, to start moving forward in. It's not even about accomplishing it sometimes. It's, it's moving forward in the thing that God has told you to do in obedience to him. I had a conversation with a gentleman about um, chasing prosperity or, or ma rather maybe chasing money and having an imbalance in that drive to get wealth and riches. And I continue to take them back to scripture. It is God who has given us the power to gain wealth. You know, um, it is his desire that we be in good health and prosper even as our soul prospers. All of these scriptures that the Lord has given us that it's his will for us not to struggle. He don't want us struggling. He don't want you hungry. He don't want you begging for bread. That's scripture. However, it is important that we stay balanced in our pursuit of what I will call success. It is important that we stay balanced, that we make sure we're giving God his time, and I'm going to say it, his tithe. Amen. Your personal relationship with him. I remember our our pastor did a, uh, when we first started Healing Streams, he used to do something when he first started, and I came with him when he first started, so I'll say we. He used to do something called, um, hmm, Home Maintenance Ministry. 
And actually at our at the men's conference in April, that's what I'm asking him to teach on. And it's about keeping balance. Keeping balance. You can't be at church uh, five, six, seven, eight days a week. You got home to take care of. You have children. You have a spouse. You have things that you have to take care of. You have to keep balance. But the children of Israel got stuck. Now, he also tells them, and, and let's be clear, he tells them in Exodus, listen, I'm going to take you around. I'm going to take you around this. He said, because if I take you the way that is easier, uh, you might get discouraged. Uh, if I take you the way of your enemies, you might get discouraged and turn back. Many of you are stuck because you're scared. Many of you are stuck because you're scared. Yes, you're stuck by some things in your past that have happened to you, and, and, and you gotta you gotta address those things. Yes, that person abused you. Yes, that person left you. Yes, that person left you as a single mom with, with three kids, five kids, two kids, one kid. Yes. Yes, that, that wife left you and went off with your best friend. Whatever it was, it happened to you. But you cannot let the issues of your past keep you stuck and not get what God has for you to do. Looking back at what happened to you, what you didn't get, unfulfilled needs, un unmet needs, unfulfilled desires, and unresolved issues. Unresolved issues, unmet needs, and unfulfilled desires. I think I'm saying that right. Unmet needs, unresolved issues, unhealed hurts. That's what it is. And a lot of times we're stuck in one of those places. What is your unmet need? Maybe you need somebody to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that happened to you. 11 days has taken you 40 years. Maybe you have healed hurt. You need that forgive me. You need whatever that hurt is. Maybe your hurt has gone on to the grave. They've transitioned in life. God is taking you this way so you don't have to face that enemy. But at some point, he's going to require you to face that enemy so you can be healed, so you can be whole. He's such a gracious God. He's such a loving God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, keep praying with me, y'all, so that looping thing will stop. So let me know you're there. Give us some thumbs up. Give us something so we know you're there. I see you, but I need to know you're there and that God is speaking to your heart. So, unhealed hurts, unmet needs, unresolved issues. What is the unresolved issue that you need to go settle? Um, in our prayer call, I believe it was yesterday, pastor was preaching from Matthew about going to make it right. And, and, and actually, he talked about it on Sunday, too. And what was interesting to me was that, um, help me, Holy Spirit, was that there was another pastor, thank you, there was another pastor who was preaching on the exact same thing about forgiveness and moving forward, literally, in a whole other state. So there is something that God is saying about us being stuck in this place because we have unhealed hurts, unmet needs, and unresolved issues. And what should have only taken us 11 days to get to our promise. To get to the thing that God has said he wants to get you, we're still stuck. And so what do we do? We find vices. We create idols. That's what they did. That's what they did. They created idols. Now, they created their first idol when they came through the Red Sea. But the truth is, in that journey of 40 years, they had many idols. What are your idols? Is it your job? Is it your looks? Is it your automobile? Is it your house? Is it your talents? Is it your abilities? What's your idol? What is the thing that you have built up around your life 
to sometimes, listen, let me say this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes your idol is not just material things that you look to to satisfy you, to put your safety and your trust in. Sometimes your idol is the thing that you have built up around you, which come, becomes a stronghold to protect you from the world, to protect you from your unhealed hurts, from your unmet needs, from your unresolved issues. And then you hide behind that and you never deal with it. And you never move forward. You got money. You got a nice house. You got beautiful kids. Got Probably got a fine spouse. But you're stuck. And you're stuck because you haven't dealt with the issue at hand. What should have taken you 11 years has taken you. 11 days has taken you 40 years. What is that? What is that? I've had to ask myself that. On many occasions. God, why am I still in this situation? Let me say this. Everything isn't always about sin. Why you are in a place may not be. Let me let me tell you the difference between being stuck. Ah, thank you, Jesus. And being assigned. This is good. The Holy Spirit. So the difference between being stuck and being assigned to a place. In your assignment, you are still prospering. You are still producing. You are not uh, faking the funk for the world to make it look like what you have. You, you really got it going on. You're really doing something. May not be all the way where you want it to be. May not be all the way where other people think you should be. But you're producing. You're advancing. You're increasing. You're adding to your portfolio. You, you, you may be stuck in that little apartment, but while you've been in that little apartment, you went and got two degrees. You went and got a degree. You finished a book. You, you lost the weight. You may be stuck in that little room or in that situation. But it doesn't, you may, you may feel like you're stuck, but the difference between being stuck and being assigned is that you are producing. The Bible says that in their 40, now listen, listen, ah, thank you, Jesus. There was the difference between their 70 years of captivity, captivity and their 40 years of wandering in the desert. I always say it, it's this mulberry bush ministry. Here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush, all through the town, all 40 years. That should have took us 11 years. I want you to look up when you get a chance, a mulberry bush. It's kind of small. It's kind of small. It's a small thing. So just imagine, you're just going around. I mean, you are treading that soil, honey. You are breaking that soil down. Hallelujah. But it's a mulberry bush. It's not even an oak tree. Feel me? You ain't even treading a large space that you're going around and around. You're going around and around because you're stuck. You're not producing. The only thing you're producing is a mark in the dirt. God is ready for you to advance your life. You're not waiting on God. I keep telling y'all, God is waiting on you. You are not waiting on God. God has told somebody to make a CD. Carla Martin, God has told you to write that play. Or come alongside of somebody else who's writing a play. Or a monologue. God has told you to do something. He's told you to produce. Even in your dry spell. Even in your dry place. Even in your desert. See, I, I always, there's a difference between a journey and a pilgrimage. Oh my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are jamming this morning, God. There's a difference between a journey and a pilgrimage. Literally, the definition of a pilgrimage is a holy journey. It is a journey that God has assigned to you. We can go on a journey. We can go on a journey and it's of no purpose. Except I just wanted to, you know, I want to go to Africa. I want to go on a safari. That's a journey. It ain't holy. It ain't necessarily assigned by God. It's what I want to do. And that's okay. It's on my bucket list. You're on a journey. But the, the pur a purposeful journey that has God in it, that is, well, let me restate that, that is assigned by God, is a pilgrimage. It's a pilgrimage. You can have a journey that is still, uh, God is in it. God was all in that journey throughout the wilderness. God is in your journey, though you're in the wilderness and a dry place and you can't seem to produce. But today, God wants you to get unstuck. Number one, stop complaining. 
Stop complaining about your situation. Stop, stop complaining. Hashtag it. Stop complaining. Oh, God, when is my husband coming? Oh, God, when am I going to get a better job? Oh, God, when am I going to make more money? Oh, God, when are people going to treat me right? Stop complaining. Stop complaining. That's the first thing. Second thing, trust God. Trust God. We build idols to put in the place of God because we don't trust God. Because we don't trust God. So we build idols. God isn't enough. He's not tangible. I can't touch him. I don't see him. Uh, I can't, we say I can't talk to him or have dialogue with him or what, because that means this exchange of communication. But yes, you can. Yes, you can. He'll talk to you. He'll talk to you through his word. He'll talk to you through signs and wonders. He'll talk to you through through the wind that's blowing through a tree. He'll talk to you through something that blows across your, your windshield. He'll, he'll talk to you. He'll talk to you through a commercial. Something you've been getting trying to get an answer for. And there it is. Pops up on, on the t Oh my God. Bam. He'll talk to you. The question is, are you listening? I challenge you today to listen. Listen. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. Get a praise in your lips. Okay, cool. I'm in this place right now, but this going to change. I'm, I'm here right now, but this going to change. I'm going to wait until my change comes. I'm going to stay right here until my change comes. God ain't told you to leave your church. He ain't tell you to do that. I don't care how many people tell you, girl, why you still there? Man, I don't know why you still there. Why you? God ain't told you to leave. Sit your tail down. It is not time for you to go nowhere. Quit talking about your season is up. Christians get, oh, they work my nerves. My season's up. You know, the only thing you see that God created that jump from church to church to church is people. You don't see trees uprooting themselves talking about, oh, it's more sun over there. I'm going to uproot myself and go over there so I can get more sun. Only Christians do that. Now, let me help you. There's another difference between a Christian and a believer. Y'all going to be mad at me, but this going to help somebody. Believers believe Christians can be fickle. We follow, and then we fall off. We follow, and then we fall off. And we'll see you no more. Talk to a man of God. I said, bruh, what church you at? Um, I'm just kind of at home right now. Why? You were serving. You were serving the man of God. Why are you at home? Oh, you're going through a divorce. Okay, I understand. But why are you at home? Why are you not at your church? You ain't got to serve your, your pastor in this season. But at least, at least be at church. Help somebody. We follow, then we fall off. Yeah, I said it. Wax on, wax off. Believers don't do that. Believers stay planted. And where they're planted, they grow. In the season that they're supposed to grow. And, that's, and that is word. When you stay planted, according to Psalms 1, your leaves will never wither. Whatsoever you do will prosper. That's what he said. Go somewhere and sit down. Part of the reason you stuck, you moving. You're physically moving, but you don't have a home. You're physically moving. So you would say, oh, I'm producing. But you unhappy. Your soul is unhappy. Oh, you faking the funk. You got your makeup on. Your lips lined. They looking good. They slamming. Your wig is tight. Your weave is good. Your bow tie is straight. Your shoes are polished, bruh. Your belt match your shoes. That's cool. I like that. But you stuck. You stuck because there's a part of you that is not being fulfilled. That is not being satisfied. I, I remember going through a season that I said, God, I want... I want to be satisfied. I'm not feeling satisfied. And, and it was the truth. I wasn't. I wasn't feeling satisfied in ministry. I wasn't feeling satisfied in life, in relationship, in, in where, how I was serving in my church, how I was using my gifts in the church, outside the church. I just didn't feel satisfied. I didn't feel satisfied in what I was doing. Uh, not so much a career, because my career is ministry. <laughs> But just in the jobs that I was getting, I'm like, God, I have all this talent and this ability and I'm just sitting on it. What's going on? And God said, get satisfied in me. Uh-oh. Just, just let me be enough. Ha! 
Jesus. Oh, I just, I, that helped somebody right there. Let me be enough for you in this season of your life. Let me be enough. So when the extra comes, you ain't all bent and twisted and your nose wide open. Oh, he has sent me somebody. Man, he has sent me somebody. I, I try to be an equal opportunity minister here. Get the, the men, they party and the women. Come on. Yeah. So you don't get bent. So you don't get twisted. So you don't get pulled away. We're all guilty. We're all guilty. We've all done it. But at 50, I got to stay planted. I got to be grounded. Do y'all hear me? Wherever you're at in your life and you're trying to get unstuck, you got to become clear about your pilgrimage. What am I on assignment for? What am I on assignment to do in this earth? It is not that job. It is not that company. It is not what you, what often it's not what we think we're doing. That's not our purpose. So, okay, you got a slamming job. You making six figures. You doing the show enough, right? You own your own company. You have your own ministry, whatever it is. But that's not your purpose. Purpose is always tied to a tangible thing that you can how do I want to say it, Holy Spirit? Account for. So people, people, typically, purpose is tied to meeting the need of a person or people. So if the work of ministry, hear me, this is going, versus the service of ministry, if it's all about the work of ministry more than the service of ministry, then you got to rethink that. If it's all about getting the next contract versus helping somebody advance their vision or, or advance their business or whatever your job, whatever your business is. If your job is all about getting the paycheck, I would venture to guess that's not your purpose. Jobs are not a stream. It's, let me, how do you want me to say the Holy Spirit? You working for someone else, bringing a check, the, check in, that is a source of income. That is not a stream of income. You know why? Because at any moment it could stop if they decide to let you go. A stream is a steady flow that comes from natural efforts and natural creation. You stuck because you haven't tapped into your purpose. You are stuck because you haven't tapped into the ways that God wants to bring streams into your life. This is why I just said it. God told you to make that CD. He told you to do that play. Yeah, you might only make $500 from the play, but at least you created a stream. At least you started moving in the direction that God told you to move. Now, why are we doing all that? Don't lay God down like, like he an idol. I can put him over here. I'm going to put him over here. Yeah, don't do that. Where is my... Hold on. Where is my... Where is my... Thank you. Where is my mercy seat? Here's my mercy seat, y'all, that, that I keep on my desk. Ah! Isn't it a blessing? We can touch the mercy seat now. We can touch it now. Glory to God. I kept the plastic on it because I don't want it to fade. Good God Almighty. So we don't don't treat it like an idol and just put it down somewhere. No, no, no. This is the mercy seat. This is the mercy seat. It's not an idol. Good God Almighty. So you don't get to just move this around and put it like Buddha in the front of the nail shop with an orange in front of it. No, 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 no. This is our relationship. You got to keep this. Oh, oh, he told Joshua, walk close to it now. Stay close, but don't touch it. Isn't it a blessing that we can now touch it? Glory to God. We can touch the mercy seat through our prayers, through our worship, through our praise. You stuck because you're not tied. You don't know what your purpose is. You're not living out purpose. You're not moving towards purpose. And that is the will of God. Some of us are stuck because we've taken God out of the equation. You got to put him back and not just, you know, you know, three, four divided by two. He, he needs to be the plus, the minus, the multiplication, the equal sign. He, need, he needs to be the, the beginning of the matter and the end of the matter. He needs to be the final result and the first question. 
He, you got to keep him. You got to keep Jesus in it. You got to keep God and his word in it. You must. God wants you to get unstuck this morning. Stop complaining. Trust God. Put down your idols, your job, whatever it is that you, you have an unhealthy relationship with that has caused you to move God out of the way. That's an idol. Identify what your unhealed hurts are, your unmet needs, your unresolved issues, and get to fixing them. Move towards healing so you can get unstuck. Listen, you say you want to be married, but you don't even know how to cook a pot of macaroni. Do you got more than one meal that you know how to cook? Do you feel what I'm saying? Sometimes our 40 year journey is because it's taken us that long <laughs> to get together. The th Listen, what sense does it make? Help me, beloved. What sense does it make for you to be praying for years about God to do something? And when it's time to do it, you're not ready. And since you don't know the hour of the day when he's coming, not just when he's returning, but when he's coming to answer your prayer. Back to the wise bridesmaids last week. Since you don't know the hour or the day of when the day or the hour of when he is coming, why not start getting ready now? Why not start preparing yourself now? God, what is it that you want me to work on? What is it that I need to deal with? I, I had a young lady who recently got engaged. And I said, what do you think are the three top things you did to prepare for this day? Because I talked to her a year ago. She wasn't studying getting married. She was like, I ain't ready to get married. Nope. And I really challenged her on why. Why are you not getting married? I know this young man loves you. I know you love him. What is it that you're fearful of? She said that question made her really start asking what is it that I'm fearful of? And she found herself at a therapist. And in this year, since we talked, she's been seeing a therapist to get to the root of what really was she fearful of as it related to marriage. And here she is today, a year later, engaged to a man that is her best friend, and I believe she is his. You got to deal with it, beloved. I tell people, honey, my therapist... She used to be on speed dial. I need a new one because she's kind of, she's not taking people right now. <laughs> but she was on speed dial. Listen, I got an issue. I'm, I'm on the edge of this thing. Help Jesus, okay? Through you, help Jesus because she was a Christian therapist. So you got to do what you need to do. You got to do what you need to do. You're praying. Is it, wasn't it, wasn't it? Wasn't it almost a disgrace? Wasn't it a sad moment that these people had prayed? Get us out of this bondage with Pharaoh. He's making us make bricks without hay. All of this stuff, that was the truth. They had a righteous indignation. They had a right to say this is wrong. God delivers them. Then they, get, they go through the Red Sea and God drowns their enemies and... Moses goes up to talk to God and he comes down and they didn't built an altar. They didn't built, built an idol and an altar and all of this. And now he got to rebuke them and he got to go back up and do the Ten Commandments on again. My God, because y'all driving him crazy. Y'all drive y'all pastors crazy. I said it. So all of this. And then God gets tired of them. Oh Lord, don't don't get tired of me, Jesus. Don't don't get tired of me complaining and not trusting you and building my own idols and and being disobedient and not doing what you say and and listening to man other than listening to you. If God has told you to do something, you need to do it. It's nothing wrong with seeking godly advice, beloved. Nothing wrong with that. But if God has told you to do something, and there's nothing wrong that if godly advice says, just hold on, hold on a minute, just sit still for a minute. Let's seek God on this. Let's pray. Let's say you and that godly wisdom and godly advice, y'all don't agree, but you know that you know that you know that God has told you to do. You better obey God. You better obey God. If what God has told you to do, if it's God, it lines up with the word. It, it draws agreement in the spirit from at least two or three. 
Listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, um, I'm just giving you an example. I am planning my, this men's conference. God gave me a vision for this men's conference. I originally had a date for this men's conference of when I wanted it to be. And it was solely based on uh, when the speaker was available. And I went to my pastor and I said, Pastor, I'm doing this. I want you to be a part. He said, hey, with, with up on this rock, well, because it's a big play at our, at, that, uh, our church under the vision of my pastor and Minister Sharon, his sister. And he said, you know, I just don't, I won't have time to really do anything before the play. I said, okay, I just believe God is saying that's not true. I said, I believe this is the time that he's available. So this is when... I don't want to lose him because I only had two people I was going to ask to speak. And that was my criteria to God. If one of these are available, then I know I'm supposed to do this, <laughs> this conference as a woman doing a men's conference. But listen, I said, Tip, I said, Pastor, we're getting ready to go on this fast. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to seek the Lord. If it's to be, he'll be available. He'll be available after up on this rock. And guess what? As tight as his schedule is. That was the only Saturday in April he was available. So it is okay to step back, to pray, to fast, to seek God. And then move forward in what God has told you to do. It's okay. But many of you are stuck right where you are. Because you're not moving. You're not doing what God told you to do. You're called to do something. You're called to kids, to teach Sunday school to the kids, to start a youth group, you're, to mentor. You're called to, to ministry, and you ain't doing nothing. And you wonder why your life is raggedy, why things are coming against you left and right, why money is flying out the door because you're trying to handle this and handle that and take care of this and take care of that and take care of this person and that person. I'm here to help this morning. I hope I'm helping somebody. I pray that God's word is helping somebody. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verses, verse 11. He said what took them 11 days, should have taken them 11 days, took them 40 years. You're wandering around in your wilderness. Because you have an unhealed hurt, an unmet need, an unresolved issue. Listen. They had mourned Moses. Oh, Jesus. They had mourned Moses. M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. They had mourned him for 30 days. God said, get up, pack your stuff, and move. Joshua chapter 1. It was time to move. Now, this was the next generation that was making it into the promised land. Because the first generation that was with Moses, all of them died off. The, the, if you were older than 20, you didn't go into the promised land. Oh, my God. I started, I was saying, do not find yourself praying about something. Believe in God for something. And the only reason you don't have it is because of you. Because you're being disobedient. Because you're not doing what God told you to do. Because you're not walking in your purpose. Because you're complaining. Because you're not trusting. Because you built your own idols. Because you decided to do it your way instead of God's way. Hey, we all been guilty. And guess what? We might be guilty again. But let somebody tell you, babe, you're doing it your way. You're not doing it God's way. The difference between stuck and, and an assignment. An assignment is in your wilderness, you will still produce. In that little room, in that little apartment, with that hoopty car, good God Almighty, you still produce it. Come on. With just you and not a staff, you're still producing. With five, with 10 members, 100 members, 300 members, you ain't got 3,000, you don't have 10,000, but you're still producing. You're still advancing the kingdom. You're still serving God. Sometimes we're in that loop like, like we get on, on here. It's because there's static in the air. Good God Almighty. There's interference in the air. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And the reason we get that looping, we, because there's interference, there's static, there's too many voices. You need to get clear about what God has told you to do. 
I say it all the time. I'm natural. I was looking at my hair this morning. And I said, I should just come on with all my little twisties, all crazy looking. I think I might do that one week. But I heard the Lord, this is what I, I, I said. I'm natural. And I remember when, when I first went natural and people would ask me, can you do my hair show? And the Lord was like, your hair show, a uh, hair show. Praise God, praise God. Hair show. And I remember saying before I could even think about it, a hair show ain't got nothing to do with my purpose. Well, would you MC for us? Mm, that's not what my voice is supposed to be used for, at least not in this season. You got to get clear. You got to get clear, beloved. You got to get clear. You got to get clear about what God has called you to do for your life. Get unstuck. Get unstuck. Oh my God, who is this for? The Lord said to tell somebody, you are you stuck because you holding on to the past of that relationship. You holding on to the past of that relationship. Not 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 the hurt. There's that too. But you holding on that they gonna come back. They ain't coming back. And you need to let it go. They not coming back. And as a matter of fact, you need to thank God that they not coming back. Because they still ain't changed. They ain't changed. They ain't ready. And while you waiting on them to come back, you just need to be asking God to perfect the things that concern you so you can be ready when he sins. But listen, he can't sin because you still in the past. You can't look forward. Listen, you can't look back and look forward at the same time. You can't look back and look forward at the same time unless you got eyes in the back of your head. Or on the side of your head. You got to let them go. I see your name on the screen. And um, I ain't going to say your name. But you know who you are. And if it's you. I want you to go ahead. And just put some smiley faces. Or teardrops or something. Amen. Put it on the screen so I know who you are. And I know that you hear me. Let them go. Because God cannot bless you with who he has for you while you still holding on to them. You can't look back and look forward at the same time. If you're trying to do both, the only thing I'm going to suggest to you is to look up. Look up to the hills from which cometh your help because your help will come from the Lord. Your answer, your strength to walk away, to stop waiting on something that you ain't got no business being with. Something, somebody that you ain't got no business being with. They ain't going to treat you right because they ain't right. The little Trump girl knew who she was marrying when she married him. What'd she expect? I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know where that came from. That just dropped. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. You know. They not. And in some cases, yep. They out of order. In some cases, they're not. They're just not for you. And they're not for you for where you are in your life right now. They're not for you for where God wants to take you. Let them go. Hashtag that boy. Let them go. So, God wants you to get unstuck. Whatever it is that God has called you to do. Start that business. Write that book. Write that play. Make that CD of music. Okay, so, yeah, I heard you. All of those things God has told you to do. Lose weight. I'm going on a journey. I'm starting mine this weekend. You need to lose weight? Lose weight. You need to get in the gym? Get in the gym. Start with one day a week. You ain't got to be go hard and be in there three days a week. Just start somewhere. Put down Snickers and hamburgers and cheeseburgers and, and chips and soda. Whatever it is, just start somewhere and watch God do it. Get unstuck so you can have what God has for you. You can't look back and look forward at the same time. What I'm going to encourage you to do is look up. Look up to the hills from which cometh your help. Your help will come from the Lord. Your answer will come from the Lord. What you need will come from the Lord. What you need to heal that unhealed hurt, that unmet need, that unresolved issue. I know that's right, Tracy, right now. Amen. You are doing a great job, sis. I'm following you on Instagram. You are doing a great job. So proud of you. 
listen, God wants you to get unstuck. Don't be like the children of Israel. What took them 40 years should have only taken them 11 days. Go incorporate that business. Go get your 501c3 to start that ministry, that youth group, that um, youth center. Whatever it is the Lord has told you to do, you need to do it. Nick Bolden, I saw your name pop up, and I believe that is a word for you. God needs you to get unstuck because he can't advance the kingdom. The part of the kingdom that's assigned to you, because there are people assigned to you. And the part of the kingdom that is assigned to you is waiting on you to do what you need to do so that it can advance. You got the kingdom. The kingdom suffers violence and the violent got to take it by force. By force. The earth is groaning for the children, the sons of God, the children of God to become the sons of God. That means the kingdom is groaning. There is a part of this earth. That is groaning for you to get in place. Uh, yeah, yeah, I said it. For you to do what God has called you to do. To just try it. To just try God, to just do it afraid. I said it. I was afraid of success. And so I was stuck. I was stuck and I was unhappy and I was unsatisfied and I was unfulfilled. Uh, many of you that are doing 50 million things, you got a job making money, but you're doing 50 million things outside of that job to, to fulfill, to feel, fulfill your need and your desire that's tied to your purpose. Now, don't get it twisted. I do a lot of stuff, but everything I do is a part of the vision that God has given me. It's all about advance the kingdom enterprises, period. Whether it's books, publishing, speaking, preaching, teaching, training, it's all about advancing the kingdom. I don't even come into nobody's presence without helping them or desiring that they leave knowing that God has purpose and destiny over their life. Advance the kingdom enterprises, all of it. I remember someone telling me that my vision was too big, that it was too big for them to. But I get that. Because they had their own vision and they couldn't digest my vision with their vision. <laughs> Glory to God. And it was okay. And it's taken several years, 10 years, for me to start putting it together. And now I see it start somewhere, beloved. Get unstuck. Get unstuck. Get the glue off the bottom of your shoe. Disconnect yourself from ungodly, unholy, unnecessary relationships. Stop doing stuff that's not productive and not advancing the vision and the purpose that God has for your life. Stop it. Just stop. Some stuff you ain't got to fast about for 10 days. You already know. You ain't got to shama ta ta ta. You ain't got to do that. Just stop. I love you. God loves you. Today, we're going to get unstuck. We're not going to complain. We're going to stop complaining. We're going to identify, first, am I stuck or am I on assignment? Is this a part of my pilgrimage where God has me? And the way that I know that is because I'm being productive in this space. I don't feel frustrated and aggravated. I don't feel like I'm not advancing or producing. I feel good about where I'm at. I know that where I'm at is where I'm supposed to be. That's how you know that you're not stuck. You're not complaining. <laughs> You're not fearful about, will I ever win? You're not fearful. You're not anxious. Be, don't be anxious for anything, but by prayer and supplication, make your request made known unto God. So his peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in him. Don't allow any longer what should have taken you 11 days to take you 40 years. You ain't got another 40 years. You ain't got another 40 years. You're already 40. You're already 30. You're already 60. You do not have another 40 years. Get busy and go do what God told you to do. Now, if you're married, make sure that you and your spouse are in agreement. 
that now is the time for you to do this. And if it's little by little, then go little by little. That's okay. But get to moving and get unstuck. Take the glue, the cement, the crazy glue, the gum off from the bottom of your shoe. Matter of fact, take the magnet. Because something that keep drawing you to the same thing, find out what the magnet is and disconnect yourself from the magnet that keeps drawing you to that thing that you ain't got no business with or no business doing. Yeah, I said it. God wants you unstuck. God wants you unstuck. He's ready. He's ready. I said it. I said it in a post the other day. Yup, leap. By faith, leap. Live expecting Abba's parachute. Leap. Do it. Live expecting Abba's parachute. He got you. God got you. You don't have to be afraid of this next phase, this next season of your life. Prophetic words have been spoken over many of you, and you've done nothing with them. You haven't even taken them back to God. Good God Almighty, that hit my spirit. Maybe it's something I need to be taking back. Jesus, ha, shaba. Oh, God, prophetic words. Words that have been spoken over your life and you've done nothing with them. Oh, my God, that is in my spirit. God said you need to do something. Get unstuck today. Hey, pull them prophetic words out. Pull them out. What did God say? What did God say? What did God say to the man or woman of God? What did he say? Pull them out and stand on them. Declare them and decree. Well, declare them. That's your word. Decree is write it out. Make it plain. Post it so you can get encouraged. Oh, my God. That is for somebody today. You need to pull those words out. If you can remember, write them down. Start speaking them. This is what shall be because the man, the woman of God said it on this day. If you don't remember the day, that's okay. But you need to start. Whew, that's for somebody under the sound of my voice. You need to pull the words that have been spoken over your life out because this is the year that God's going to move on your behalf. And he wants you to remember it. He wants you to remember that I told you this was going to happen. <laughs> he wants you to remember. Didn't I tell you this was going to happen? Because when you remember, wait a minute, this was spoken. Such and such said that. God told me he was going to do that. And it's happened. So then you're adding to your faith. You're building your faith. You're adding to your faith. And you go from faith to faith and glory to glory. And that's what God wants. When you're going from faith to faith and from glory to glory, you're getting unstuck. You're getting unstuck and you're going higher and higher in him. Just make sure your roots are solid. And they're solid in him. And his ground is always good. And you're being watered by the word. By the Holy Spirit, by praise, by worship. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I pray that something was said today to help you to get unstuck. We will not be like the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 1. That what took them 40 years should have only taken them 11 days. We repent right now, Daddy God, for our, obe our disobedience, God. For going around the mulberry bush. For being afraid of our success. For being afraid of failure. God, forgive us. Forgive us for not doing what you told us to do in this season of our life, in the previous season of our lives. God, forgive us. Forgive us for being stubborn. Forgive us for complaining. Forgive us, Daddy God, for not trusting you. Forgive us, God, for staying in places and situations with people longer than we should have. Forgive us, Lord. Ha! Ah, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive us, God. Forgive us. Help us to walk in your way. Help us to learn your voice. Help us to be obedient. Help us, God, to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us to be led by the Spirit so that we can be called the children, the sons of God. God, put us in place and help us to walk in our purpose. Help us to know our purpose so we can walk in our purpose and fulfill purpose to advance your kingdom. 
We love you, Daddy. And we thank you for your forgiveness. Now, God, speak clearly to your sons and to your daughters. Give them clear direction for their life. Give us clear direction for our lives and for this season of our lives. We trust you, God, with our life because you gave us this life. And so, Daddy, we love you. And we thank you. Thank you, God, for fourth. Fourth. <laughs> fourth. Somebody just wrote something. I'm sorry, guys. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the watchmen. Thank you, God, for this fourth watch prayer time. Thank you for your sons and daughters. Bless them and bless them indeed. Bless them going in and bless them coming out. Bless them when they lay down and bless them when they rise up. Bless their storehouses and bless their field. Bless their children. Bless their marriages. Bless their job. Bless their finances, God. Bless their health, Lord. Bless them, God. Answer their prayers, Lord. Do the exceeding and the abundant above all they can ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works within them. God, whatever weapon that is being formed will not prosper. You will give them, you will give us the power to condemn them and to bring them down and shut the mouths of the naysayers, even the nay that is saying in our own minds. We will do it and we will make it. God bless you. Love you with the love of the Lord. Grace and peace to you all. Have a wonderful Tuesday. Pray for me. Uh, I have the assignment with the Democratic, um, whatever it is, luncheon today to speak there. So pray for me. That's at 11 o'clock. That's why I'm halfway done already. So I love you with the love of the Lord. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you next Tuesday. I'm going to try to move this to my Tea Tape Ministry page. So if I have not friended you, can you go to Tea Tape Ministries and like the page so I can add you? Because I'm trying to take everything off of my personal page and put it on the page that it's associated to. And Fourth Watch Power Prayer Teaching is absolutely um, a part of Tea Tape Ministry. So that's where I'm going to try to start moving this. So if you have not, if I did not friend you already, can you please go to that page for me? Thank you. Thank you for your hearts. Thank you for your thumbs up. Thank you for your smiles. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for taking this pilgrimage with me every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. You are blessed and highly favored in the Lord. See you next week. God bless.